two barges it's got to go to the elevator and they're in the possibly worst spot they can be so we're gonna pull two out on the head there and then we're gonna try to stick two back in the hole there instead of moving 12 barges we do all the little work but we the ones that move all the barges turn barges around spot the elevators work the boats a fleet boat and a line boat is about like a race car and an 18-wheeler. I've seen some pilots out there on these line boats that can't run a fleet boat because it moves too fast. I've seen some pilots out here on the fleet boat jump out on a line boat that can't run a line boat. It's just two completely different jobs. But this job is where the excitement is. Like I said, it's a challenge and you better be prepared for it because you never know what will happen. Uh, it looks like we might lose a foot and a half of water there. About five, six days. Hey, but you are checking everything across there. You ain't setting me up or nothing. 20 high. You got 12 to go. You fly stops on you. Coming down the river all the time. One half foot, feet still on the inside, four to slide. You got three and a half feet to ease, well, look up the good side here. Ten five to the good on your port. You got about eight feet to close the gap. Ease it on down, kill it down. One and a half high, slide to the port all the time. You're going to be pretty wide, ease it on down. One foot, got it on flat side, six inches, touching up in a foot, touching up on the strong side, and all the strong in the hole of the port. There we go. <laughs> What I say, a challenge. Well, I like being on the river. I'm my own boss. I'm sitting in an air conditioned room when it's 100 degrees out there. I'm sitting in a warm room when it's zero degrees out there. I think it's the perfect job, but it's hard to get to. Hey, on the mic. Yeah, buddy. And hey, my six, well, he said it's six inches. He won't be taking three down there. You all gone, Tom. You all gone up here. All right. Hey, Dennis, that's gonna be rough on you right there. 
Yes, sir. You said that furrow, they're gonna be rough. Rajo. Yeah. Okay, hey, we gonna get paid. We we gonna get paid Monday or Friday. Huh? We gonna get paid Friday or Monday. Gonna get ready to pay a Gabalon dock now. This is the port of Rose there, this dock three. We lo we finna go tie these barges off. And we're gonna go pull that one right there. And they load grain up in the barge when we tie them off. Yes, sir, we stay busy. <laughs> right now we busy. Pop me, don't keep shit in the river, dog. Shit. Uh, I've been working there out here for 12 years. It's all right. Hey, y'all hold on. Don't tell me who's shit. I'm trying to be a fake water again. I like the water. Water and moving barge and riding the boat. I'm gonna get down. I gotta talk to him going into this barge. Pop that barge out of the way, Pop. Five wide. Ready to to clear. Four. Three wide. 25 clear. Two. One. Six inches. Touching up. 20 feet to clear the water. Mary Parker to the, uh, the Charlie Melonica. Charlie Melonica, son, backstage calling. Hey, bud, you getting in the way southbound there or something? I just took off from the fleet. Got uh, a couple loads pressed up. Okay, I ain't got the three myself. Uh, I'll be over in the one for you, front of close to Magnolia Fleet here. Yeah, just fine, man. Catch you on that one. Is there a ship following you up there? Yeah, it sure is. Sure is. He's about to start through the bridge there, I believe. All right. Appreciate it. All right, bud. Yeah, have a safe one. Most of it's grain, beans, wheat. Right now, we got a fertilizer barge over here, two coal barges. You know, uh, and this coal go, well, you know, it'll go up at Arkansas River to one of the power plants up there. Uh, fertilizer barge, will, they're getting ready to stock up on fertilizer for, uh, you know, planting season, spring, fixing start these farmers, fixing start planting fields and stuff. So they're going to start stocking up. Line boats are uh, pretty much the workhorses out here on the river. You know. This boat, we run from Rosedale to New Orleans. Usually we pick up everything in Rosedale and uh, start dropping in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Whenever we get through dropping all our southbound stuff, start picking up northbound barges and go back to Rosedale. I just like the adrenaline rush coming south, man. You know, make sliding, guiding, making a bend. You know, it's not like a car you drive on the road got traction. You know, you got a plan four moves ahead of what you're going to do. And, uh, 
And sometimes that plan works out, sometimes it don't. You got to switch to plan B real quick. You got 6,000 horsepower in your ass, man. Well, that's great. While we're on the boat, we work six hours off, six hours off. Uh, work my six hours, and then my six hours off, pilot comes up here and relieves me, and works his six hours while I sleep, eat, watch a little TV, whatever. Deputy Stone, Mary Parker. Hey, Mary Parker. Deputy Stone, Bay, southbound by the Queen uh, 35. You on the one? Yeah, we'll be on the one for you. All right, guys. All right, buddy. You're safe. Man, you won't meet a nicer person than out here. You know, helpful people. We're, we, we're like family on here. But you got some guys, man, that. Uh, they just don't give it up, man. They, they, they take them off this thing on a stretcher. You know, they just don't want to. You know, you got the, you got the older guys where, you know, their wife probably done passed away and, you know, maybe they lost a, a kid or two. You know, they're in their 70s, 80s. You know, hell, you know, this is all they know. This, this is their family. This is, this is, this is it for them, you know, towboating. Towboat runs deep, man. It runs deep. Right now we're just checking for water. It's got some beams at the bottom and water's over them. You know, it's about like about two foot. You gotta get the pump in there and get it out. What you running for, Colin? Everything else is tight. Everything else is tight after that. Tighten that wire, call him. Hurry up. That's a tight wire right here, boy. Yeah. Show your boy. Doing, doing a fine job. Let me just your regular breast wires. Keeps that barge going forward, that one's going back. Four and a half, keep them together. If it's real loose, you'll start seeing the barges bouncing up and down, then going and shifting back doing and forth snake, like that. Snake, doing the snake dance. I had a whole toe uh, break loose. I, I, had, I had my first trip ever on the river, we busted a whole toe. No, I've never been on one of them. It sucks. Had a couple wires break, though. That's oh, we had it. a whole toe bust. It usually takes about uh, almost a whole day to get them put back together. And if you, if you Especially if you don't have like a, a tug to help you, like you bust them on the like a spot on the river where you're all alone, you're screwed. This would take, seems like a good hot move.
right, 7 or 11. Wins first hand. Four points, four. You want to bet on it? Fuck yeah. You want to bet on it. All right, so my points for you. You threw two cigarettes in. You're getting cocky already. Yeah, we work uh, every time. We're, we're on the same shift, so we work 28 days with each other. Mm -hmm. Big six. So I'm stuck with him the whole ride, unfortunately. My job on the boat is basically wake up in the morning, you know, make sure we get our cleanup going. Um, first things first, we go check that tow. Make sure make sure that no loose wires are out there. We check the barges for water. I am, right now, I am the at the lead mate's position. Our first mate, when he gets his license, that'll move D-Lo to first, and that'll move me to second mate. So, and that's pretty high up on the totem pole. He's a, he's a maxed out deckhand, so he's- Senior deckhand. He, yeah, so he's supposed to be right there, right there under me. It's kind of cool, because he's been out here for three years, and I haven't been out here but a year. Big seven, 10. Damn. Man, I came out here for a career because my my brother-in-law, his dad's been a captain on a towboat for over 20 years, man. And uh, he's got so many nice things, beautiful home, nice cars, boats, you know, beautiful wife, which he had her, you know, when he was a deckhand. But, uh, you know, without a college education, you can make over 100 plus thousand a year. Fix it. Seven. Damn it, boy, lost him two cigarettes again. And that's that. Cat. What channel we on? 18, 18. Shit. Damn sure thought we was going to avoid. Missed the tow work. Uh, unit one to the tug that'll be working to Mary Parker. Man, the eating's good, man. The company takes care of you. Friday's a fish day, Saturday's steak, Sunday's chicken. I think the, uh, every two weeks, we order like two grand, 2,500 worth of uh, groceries. Yeah, they take care of you, we eat good. My daddy worked out here, my uncle, my grandma was a cook for 10 years out here. I've been working for Jan Tran about nine months now. And it's rough out here, man. Clothes be ripping. Wires be catching them, and you walk on these barges all the time. Like this, that's these are my my third three pair of boots, and went through in over seven months. You know, you go through them fast. I've been out here about 72 days straight right now, and uh, I'm just doing it where I really I want a truck, I'm trying to get me a truck, a Chevrolet Z31 four wheel drive. Just turned 20 January the fifth. Spent my birthday out here in Christmas. It all comes down to it, it ain't, you know, you gotta, you gotta get it while the getting's good. All right, I'm gonna go back and start tipping now. Uh, well, the barge is good, just missing a uh, cover top 
So when I do the barge report, I had to put on, I got one cover top missing and, and draw a circle on it, on the manhole cover, and just on the uh, paper, stuff like that. We had, we had a little delay before we been dropping barges. So for the next mate, I was moving rigging. So when he come out here and drop the barges, all that be out the way. It's a, it's a good, decent job. You know, you had to try to get along with everybody, live like a family. Sometimes it get rough. Kind of got into a tight where I needed more money, so I gave uh, this right here a shot at it. So I just moved me up to a lead man, so hopefully I become a second mate or a first mate, then I'll go from there. Clean, sweet, white, mop, and shine. That's right, Amos, John. Yeah, he does all right. He does pretty good. He ain't doing nothing like the rest of us ain't ever done. I have cleaned my toilets and thrown out trash, picked up toothpicks. And... You got to have the right attitude, right personality. It's all about what a man wants to do. All right, I'm going, Mr. John. Anything, though? Good, good, good. All right. About that time, Colin. About that time, Tim.
my home right here. Now, when I get off for two weeks, that's my house. But this is my home. This has been my home for 21 years, right here. While I'm at the house for them two weeks, I think about the boat all the time. I'm thinking, well, is that working right? Is this working right? Is everything doing okay? Uh, do I need to call and see, uh, do they need me? And, uh, you know, I, it's always on my mind. I get up five o'clock every morning, drink a bottle of coffee, I make my rounds, I go check my gauge to make sure everything's okay. It makes me feel good knowing that I'm still able and capable of uh, keeping the boat going. The boat going, we make money. If the boat stops, it cannot run, we cannot make no money, see. And, and that makes me feel good. It makes me feel uh, wanted, appreciated. I'm from the old school and, and we was raised up to work. When my first job was taking that slop bucket underneath the mom and dad's bed. It makes me more responsible and appreciate what I do have and take care of. It seems like this generation, they're not raised up to work. They don't want to work. You know, they, they want to do other things. They say that I'm hard to get along with. I primarily stay back here majority of the time in the office here, in my bedroom, in the engine room. We got a lead man on here, Daniel. Daniel and I, we get along great. When he came out here, he was a, a low-paid deckhand starting out, and now he's worked his way up within a year and a half to lead man, possibly here pretty soon, the second mate or mate. And I, I like that. I like to see people better themselves, see? And that's what I like about Daniel. Five more years. If I can make it five more years, I can retire and drop, at least get my Medicare. But I, li I wouldn't like to work as long as I could because I'd be unhappy at the house not doing nothing. Hey. Hey, Captain, did you need me for anything? I was just, uh, I couldn't, I couldn't find a shredded cheddar, so I just, you know, on the cheddar cheese, I just put, uh, broke shredded beside it and beat bacon on it. I didn't see shredded on there. Yeah, it, it's not on there. I usually just write it in, but, uh, I didn't see nothing on there. Yeah, that's what I did. I just broke shredded and beat bags on it. Just write it in, but, uh, whatever, that'll work. Yeah, that's what I did. I just broke shredded and beat bag. I just want to make sure I was getting it right. Oh, yeah, you did right. All right. Today is a steak day on the river. Uh, we pretty much look forward to that day because we get to have a ribeye. I'm the cook on the boat. I uh, try to help feed these guys and keep them strong and healthy. I, I started from the bottom. I'd say I, I'm moving up a little bit. You know, I, I'm getting older and I don't have to go out on the toe anymore. I kind of messed up in my life. I'm kind of like one of the misfits. Uh, I had a hard time finding a job, uh, really. That's why I'm thankful for the river, because it's like giving me a second chance. You know, for the first time in a long time, I'm living above poverty level. And uh, I'm really proud of that. Yeah. I think it's like part of America feeding the world, you know? And it's more than me just taking care of these guys on the boat. I feel like I'm part of something bigger, you know. To me, the river is peaceful, you know, and it's also respected. It's really dangerous, but uh, at the same time, uh, it's, it brings me peace. It's like I come out here and I leave a lot of my problems behind, you know. It's just a lot of serenity.
Paducah, Nashville, Tennessee. Um, there's some more. There's another one. Um, Carolina, they're hiring experienced deck hands. Put John clothes in the dry. John said what? Ch change the clothes over to the dry? Hell no. I, I, I just be looking. Uh, he always said he going somewhere else. I told him he ain't going to make it in no other company. He hardly ever want to get up on time, won't keep his room clean. He, I don't think he'll make it nowhere else. They think, they think uh, I'm anti-social, man, when I be on the boat. I really don't do too much talking. I like, I, I just the way I've been 10 years, man. I, you know, when you're in prison, you see things, you don't see it. You hear things, you don't hear it. Yeah, I was selling drugs and uh, had a little money, had a little drugs. I mean, a uh, dude, he wanted to try to rob me for my money and my drugs, and I shot him. Gave me 25 years, 10 to serve, 15 to spend. I was out a year before I came out here, and I've been out here two years. I told him, man, uh, if you hire me and I can't do the job, y'all don't have to pay me. I've been out here ever since. That's why I be trying to tell them young guys, man, they be on here playing all the time and get home, they be showing up. I told them, man, they ain't where they want to go. Really not where they want to go. I seen a lot of them come in now, man. A lot of them didn't make it out of there. Bologna, cheese, and uh, mayonnaise with a bag of them chips. Yes, a bottle of water. Wash your hands, please. <laughs> I'd have been at the bottom of the barrel, man. I hope I can keep going up now. Hook your eye first there, mate. Hook your eye first. Your little eye first, Cor. Kids always go first. Watch your shut, man. What is your toes? Quiet, no barking. Huh? What'd you say? Nothing. Nothing, pretty boy. Put your little curly cues in your hair.
hot out here. A lot of guys just don't want to be out here. But Captain John used to come out here and see that wire out there like that, especially being on the head of the tow. That had been somebody's ass, and it would probably come down on me because we're the last crew out here on the deck. You talking about, you know, losing my job, and I don't want to lose the money I'm making right now. And that second mate position's coming up real soon, so I want to show them that I'm ready for it. It's rough. Every six hours, you're constantly doing something, and uh, there's never a day off. There's never a time to actually sleep in and, and get you a good eight hours sleep. Not one day, entire day, you can just lay on that couch, kick your feet up, and not have to work, have, you know, have the guilty conscience of your captain coming down and catching you on the couch. Like, shit, you know? Me and uh, Colin, We've been busting butt the past four or five days, you know. We're gonna reward ourselves to a little quiet time night, eat some pizza, and maybe find a movie, you know. But we gotta suge the walls first, so. <laughs> Still gotta work, you know, some. I'm, I'm, I'm struggling myself to stay happy and just, just stay positive out here, because, you know, I miss home too, and I'd love to go home every day myself. But I think I finally found something I actually enjoy. Well, I enjoy it, but I want to stick with it and, and work here for a long time, you know? Because I'm not getting any younger. And I mean, I can't keep bouncing around, starting from the bottom and trying to make my way to the top, you know? Just physically, it's not gonna be, it's not gonna happen. It's just hard right now because the guys I have have all been in it with me. See, we were all peons together, so you know, now somebody else is telling them what to do. They'll man up, shit, I've still got a lot of growing up to do, man. I have no room to talk, but this job's helped me kind of man up a little bit more than what I was, to be honest with you. This is river life. We work, we work no matter what. Rain, sleet, snow, 100 degree weather, we work. They don't bother me. Could be worse. Could, could, I could be living in a box somewhere. You do right. I said, I wish you would do right. Well, well anyway, let me go off the phone, all right? We'll take care of Grandma until I love her, all right? 
No, I love you. Hey, baby. Mm hmm. Both of them are fractured. Oh, shit. Really? I know. I really don't give a shit about the vet bill, honestly. <clears throat> All right, baby, I love you. Yeah, happy anniversary, baby. <laughs> All right, baby, I love you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Lord. Well, my dog's probably going to live. They were worried there for me. We're still not out of the woods, though. They, they, her, both her lungs were collapsed. They got her lungs back up. So we're just waiting. I said to probably keep the dog over the weekend. Of course, my mother-in-law's in the hospital, and they're going to keep her for another week. I was worried about her all day. It's me and my wife down in uh, Navarre. My Miss Beautiful right there, man. That's my baby girl on the four-wheeler. Without the Western River system, the United States would shut down. It would shut completely down. There's not one thing that you don't touch, use, or drive on daily that was not in a barge. I mean, if you, when you get in your car and you leave your driveway, guess what? Concrete was probably in a barge. The tires you're rolling on, the petroleum to make them tires was in a barge. When you pull out on the asphalt road, that stuff was in a barge. Styrofoam plates, plastic cups, plastic chairs, you know, all the, the stuff, the chemicals that were involved in making that stuff was in a barge at some point. If you shut off the Ohio or the Upper or the Illinois or, or you shut off the Lower, which is the main artery, you know, it, it's over. When, when I'm out and about, you know, I think about the things that, that we push in the bars that people are enjoying, you know. Uh, I don't call any, I can't pinpoint the time, okay? Uh, it'll, it'll depend on what time the crew van gets me back there. And then, you know, it'll take me 30 minutes from there to get to you, your, your car. So I'll do, I'll get it as soon as possible. Just, huh? What? Hello? That's not trouble. Just, if you'll leave your car, if you'll leave, it's not trouble. If you'll leave your car unlocked, I'll get it. You'll have a box for me, right? Okay. Well, I, I'm just going to say, I'm going to say this. You let too many things upset you. I know. I can understand you not wanting to live with me, but I don't think you want to live around him if he's causing you that much problem. Okay, just do that. Just do that for me, because I got to have it to go get my identification. Oh God, that's why I can't live with it no more. You panic so weird, Crazy. <laughs> I ain't they bad. Oh. For real. God. Driving nuts. One time, well, what were we getting those for? She called us.
Watch yourself down there. You got two ratchets you can either knock it off of. I know that's a safety ratchet, it ain't gonna pop off. That ain't no one. safety ratchet, it's blue. Man, that blue ratchet ain't no safety ratchet. Crazy as hell. Look at it. You just see it all day long, safety It's round, ratchet. man. That ain't that, that, ain't that no, other thing. No, it's safety ratchet. Huh? Safety ratchet. No, I'll teach ain't. you, i teach you safety ratchet between a regular ratchet one day. Man, that is not no safety ratchet, man. Whatever. That's why you steal a dick in. Yeah, that's right. you won't listen. Why ain't like a little girl? There you go. Like it. Now we just waiting, uh, till they come. Uh, right now we uh, we dropping four empties to the uh, Vidalia Fleet in Natchez, Mississippi. And uh, after we drop these four barges, we got it all wired in where everything gonna stay in place, where the barges won't slide or move or anything. So once we drop these four. We're gonna put the sounder back in and we're gonna head on the road there. Man, I gotta pack my bags. What you gonna do when you get there, though, man? What? You going fish? Yeah, I'm gonna do a little fishing, man. Hang um, on with my old lady. Yeah, um, we got this haunted cemetery where I live, this old Confederate cemetery out in the woods. And me and one of me and my um, ex girlfriends, we were sitting out there one night. You know, I got ready to leave, and I went to, you know, it's not like you back up, just put it in reverse, and just turn your wheel and just head out. Man, it took me like 30 times to do it, man. I don't know what it was. It seemed like the, the road was like this near. Man, and I, and I, somehow or another, I got out of there. I don't know how I did it. And I was, you know, I was going down the dirt road, man. And all of a sudden, man, I'm, I'm not lying, man. I never believed in ghosts or like that, but this is what made me start believing in them. All of a sudden, that damn thing came into my body, man, like it took control of me. It just, it just like glued me to my seat. I'm not even lying. Not, not, not no longer your tailboard, but glued me, glued me to my seat, and my truck ran off in the ditch. I'm talking about ditches. I'm talking about my truck should never came out of anything. I, I mean, it did not even have a scratch on it. I was like weighed upside down, like super bad. Well, anyway, somehow I know, like it came out of me, and I got back on the road. Like five seconds later, I did it again. Bam, we went back in the ditch. I just, I'll just sit there stuck. I couldn't say nothing or nothing. I got strong enough to throw it in um, park and cut the key off. And while, while, while this all happened, somebody was in the back seat laughing, like a, it's like a little kid laughing. I always keep my Bible for my dad. She grabbed my Bible. As soon as I opened the page, bam, was, I started reading. And exactly how I felt was there was that scripture right there. It's crazy. It was, it was like, I forgot, it was like Isaiah something, but um, I was in my truck, but um, it was like, it was like um, um, how I was, um, man, no. Y'all believe in Jesus? I know he died on the cross. Usually it's one person on the whole tow boat that don't believe in Jesus. <clears throat> but. So, Dilo, where do I stand on the totem pole? Like a scale of one to ten? Three? I don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, the best, you the best guy they got to lay wires, though. I mean, you lay good wires, man. But you guys, you gotta prove some hard work though, man. To get that position. Go ahead. Hey, um, channel 18, um, they won't know where he wants the rigging at. On the stern. On the stern. On the stern of the barges. Yeah, we're gonna uh, put it on the boat. Okay, all right. Uh, he, he's gonna swap you, I think he said four sets, sir, d -Lo. He's gonna take four sets with him. At, uh, Gonna give us four sets. Right. So you just put it right here on, on the uh, stern of the barbecue. Yeah, man. Uh, it was my wife's birthday, man. Uh, I had a uh, it's a Tyson food in my time, and I had brought man about ten cases of chicken, man. I had it just stacked up out there from the different grid. Uh, they were frozen. Finna get ready to start, and I had like. My little kids out there, neighborhood little kids, I was getting them ice cream, I was throwing, putting balloons up and everything. Oh, man, he come back. So when he jumped out the car, he said, man, I need, break yourself, give it to me. By that time, I had to get all the little kids, because he already cocked the pistol. 
I got all the kids, put them in front of him. So I said, if he shoot, he'll hit me instead of the kids. So by the time I got all the kids in the house, I always kept the, uh, I kept a little salt right behind the door, a 12 gauge pump with a 10 round clip. Oh man, the time, I, the time I got all the kids in the house, I just reached back there and got it, knocked that button off, come running out there, pop, pop, pop. Drop it. Started to kill him, man, but one of my boys looking out the window and all the neighborhood out there tell me don't do it, man. I, I started to kill him, but he paralyzed, though. Yeah, police come. They been knowing me for years. They all over the neighborhood. I'm just trying to keep them from searching my house. Cause I had drugs all in them, man. I said, Damn. So I just I just came outside when they pulled back up. I throw that motherfucker gun to us. Here you go, man. And I sat down on the porch, smoked me a cigarette. They were getting them up and they had the helicopter come fly like close to the park where they can just rush them over there and send them to Jackson, man. And shit, the time they did all that, they, they finally told me go and get in the car, man. I said, Y'all ain't got cuffs, man. I get back there. Just keep from searching my house. You know what I'm saying? I just hurry up, cooperated with him, man. Then they sent me. Put it in. They done put the rig in there? I don't even put the rig All right, Captain, last wire. How you doing this morning, Ms. Leslie? Oh, doing good. I cannot complain. Can't complain. Oh, uh, I was gonna just give you a heads up on Colin Bennett there. Uh, he just getting to where he ain't working out on here. And, you know, I've kept him on here as long as I have because I kind of half ass feel sorry for the boy. I hadn't really done anything to write him up. He just kind of stands around, looks off into space when, you know, he's out there on tow. And, the last two or three trips has just been getting, you know, worse and worse. Just, I, I don't know if, if he got home problems. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with him. He don't, well, that's the problem then. <laughs> oh, really? That's why I've had him on as long as I have, because I feel sorry for him. But it's just getting to the point where I don't know. I don't know what to do. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Well, I took care of that issue when I got on here. We got her cleaned back up and polished on old girl a little bit and got her, got her back spick and span. So, yeah, I noticed that when I got on here too. And then Jerry had called me and said something about it. But I got on top of that. Hey, you hear me? Hello. Hello. I didn't hit a dead spot. Hey, D-Lo. Yeah, either you or Kobe won, somebody had to turn it ahead. We're gonna get a headline first, you know, somebody gonna hand it up to him. And then, you know, and actually we're six long, he's five long, so you're gonna have to move that line up to the next couple of the steering couple up there. That's the best deckhand I've had in 15 years on the boat, man. He, uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. I've had a bunch of good ones, but but he's probably probably top notch, man. He uh, uh, always working, stays busy. Doesn't pass nothing up. Find stuff to do. It's hard to find him like that anymore. And he's a uh, he's a rare breed. All right, John. You start the job back up by ten feet. We're gonna do tow work first. The crew van probably will be here about eleven, so we're gonna get the tow work knocked out and then. Do the crew change afterwards. Hey, start falling back, John. Caught you in line. Start falling back. Oh, okay. Start falling back. I got you. Here we go.
captain to tell me I'm going, going to go home when I get to Rosedale. Yeah, he said it ain't cutting it no more. He's been out for me for a while now. Just trying to get me to get rid of me. I lost a lot of motivation when Tim got that lead man spot because that's fucking bullshit. I've been out here for three years. He's been out here for a year. I'm, I'm tired of it. I know that. But you miss a lot of shit. It's all about the little things. The little things in life makes you happy. I'm just not happy being out. I'm being gone all the time no more. It's just, I'm tired of it. Hell yeah, I look forward to getting off the boat. I'm, get, I'm, I'm gonna have me a good time. I will probably go ride turnos and drink some beer. Well, the Jeep, the Jeep, the top off the Jeep and the Jeep was full, loaded full of women, more likely. I look forward to every day I'm at home. I love it at home. Go get my, uh, I gotta pick up a package for my ex wife, then I think I'm gonna go to the casino for a little while because I've got a free room there and free food, and I'm gonna chill out under the AC. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Still in Louisiana, then. Yeah. I used to sell vacuum cleaners here when I was about your age, Kobe. You sell vacuum door to door, yeah. What? Because I had, that was my job. You might buy any? Yeah. I was number eight in the nation one time. How much you sell them for? Shoot. When I first started, they were about five hundred dollars. Ain't no telling how much they cost now. Are, are you bullshit? Hell no. I can't believe shit you say. What well, I'm gonna lie about something like that for? 